In this video, I'm creating Harry Potter pet companions in one of these frames. We are in part three of this series, and last time I said there is gonna be four, but I think there's gonna be seven, because I thought of more creatures to create, more pet companions, and um, yeah, I think we'll continue it for a little bit longer. As you saw, I have some pink fluffy fabric that I'm going to use to make a pygmy puff called Arnold, owned by Ginny. And this is going to be an owl named Pigwidgeon, which was Ron's owl. Pigwidgeon, also known as Pig or Piggy, was Ron Weasley's first pet owl. Pig was responsible for the handling of Ron's mail starting in 1994. It was a gift from Sirius Black after the loss of Ron's pet rat. By the way, if you hear any thunder and rain in the background, that is because it is raining, actually bucketing down outside right now. And this is the best night for voiceover, so there you have it. It will add to the ambiance. After Scabbers, Ron's old pet rat disappeared and having been found out to be Peter Pettigrew, Sirius Black felt partly responsible for Ron's loss of a pet. So Sirius sent him Pigwidgeon, nicknamed Pig. Upon receiving the owl, Ron let Crookshanks sniff him to check if he really was an owl, to the surprise of Harry and Hermione. Pigwidgeon was named by Ginny Weasley because she thought the name was cute. Ron tried to change it, however the owl would not answer to another name. If you're wondering what the white goop is that I'm applying here, this is liquid Sculpey. I thinned it out a little bit with some hand sanitizer, which has some alcohol in it that will break it down. I do this to adhere the head to the wood and also to adhere the clay to the painter's tape. I find when you're working with polymer clay and you're trying to sculpt, try to sculpt the base shapes first and then go into the details. Harry borrowed Pig during the Triwizard Tournament to communicate with Sirius, who was hiding at the time. Fred and George also asked to borrow him in order to support their secretive business venture. Pig was known to hang around the stairways performing for students. Because of this, Ron called him a stupid little feathery git for his attempts to show off rather than promptly bringing Ron his letters. Unfortunately, Pickwidgeon isn't featured in the films, but appears with Ron in a promotional still photo for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and briefly in the background while Harry, Ron and Hermione are talking at the burrow in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. In the book Harry Potter the Creature Vault, it says that Pig was a present from Ron's family, while he was actually a present from Sirius Black. A Pygmy Puff was a miniature puff scheme bred by Fred and George Weasley and sold at their shop Weasley Wizard Wheezes at 93 Diagon Alley in London as one of the known products in the Wonder Witch range. Now I have to tell you something about this sculpt. This is my least favorite one of all of them mainly because it didn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, the way I had envisioned. Um, but I left it because, you know, we can't win them all. He's a little bit derpy and I suppose that makes him cute. The Pygmy Puffs were one of the Weasley twins' most popular products, as George said that they were having trouble breathing them fast enough for the demand. 
As you can see, I'm cutting this fluffy fabric from the back here. And that is because this way you will risk minimal fluff flying around in your studio. And also the fluff direction maintains its original shape. So you don't get blunt cut lines. Ginny bought a purple pygmy puff named Arnold in August 1996, although the one that you can see on her shoulder in the movie Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince seems more pink than purple. Because this fluffy fabric is very, very, very bright, I am trying to tone it down with some light pink chalk and this will tone it down just a little bit it doesn't have that fluorescent uh, quality anymore but it's still very very bright Luna Love could believe that all pygmy puffs sang on Boxing Day. A group of puff skeins or pygmy puffs is called a puffle. And because there are simply not much more information about these creatures, I am going to tell you again about the process and the stuff that I'm doing in this video. I am uh, painting this pygmy puff, its head uh, pink, and then go over dry brushing with white. However, I do end up flocking this pygmy puff's head with some cut of uh, fabric, not yarn, fabric. And um, that is because I was at this point not sure if this was a cat wrapped in a pink blankie or a bear wrapped in a pink blankie or something like that. Anyway, I am attaching that pink fluff with hot glue and then tuck in the sides. And here I am painting the owl. I start with a brown as the undertone as the owl it has a light overtone but I wanted to have the dark brown shining from up, through from underneath and then dry brushing some white on top. This is the very first owl in a larger scale that I've ever sculpted and I'm actually pretty happy with the result. The other owls that I've sculpted are in a tiny, tiny matchbox and the owls are very little as well. This particular owl, Big Widgeon, has some tufts on its beak just above it and on the sides of his eyebrows and his ears. So I'm fluffing out this yarn and then straightening it with a straightening iron. Then I'm going to attach that with some PVA glue. I don't know what exactly happened during my thought process in this video. I just completely forgot to do the banners with the names as well. So we get to that after after all this painting process so usually i sculpt the faces then i bake it and then i sculpt the banners for the names and then i bake it again but instead of that i just went straight into paint and adding the um, yarn and the, the fur and i just completely forgot about the banners so we'll get to that later and now i'm cleaning out those eyes and look how that looks. I really, really like that result. Now I'm painting the background and um, yeah, I probably should have started with that because the puff skin was a little bit in the way and adding some dry brushing to the sides and then going over that white with some brown as well to make it look aged. And here we get onto the flocking. So I'm filling in this face with glue, then brushing that out, and then I'm going to add the flocking to the face, let that dry, and then brush it off. And um, then we should have a um, something that resembles a puff skin. 
here I am sculpting out the banners and I'm of course starting with that same font that I've used for the other ones as well tracing that over pressing that in and then removing that so I can um, press it in a little bit further and sculpt that banner I am using a different frame covered in tin foil so I can bake it in the oven take it off and then glue it onto the actual sculpture as we see it here I do have to say that painting them like this rather than it being on the board already is easier so I'm just using my usual aging techniques painting the banner, banner a light brown and then adding in details with a darker brown and an even darker brown and then painting the letters black let's have a look at the final result and this is it for the third video in this series i hope you enjoyed this one i had a lot of fun sculpting these ones it wasn't my best one but it's still worth putting it out there anyway all my social media can be found in the description box below and if you're new here welcome don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos and of course become part of the raven family thanks so much for watching stay safe and i'll see you all in the next one bye